We're doing all our own singing and dancing around here. No body doubles, no auto tuning. That's for right. Our review no of, Marty Nixon. No, no, it's all us. We've been we've been working on this for our review of Spirited. Alonzo, being the Christmas guru, will tell you about this movie. So, out of all the people on the planet, murderers, people who do gender reveal parties, I'm the guy you're going to haunt. You know what? Forget it. So, Will Ferrell is the the spirit of Christmas past, and he is long overdue for retirement eligibility, but he just isn't ready to go back to Earth yet. He would rather keep doing his job. Once a year, he and his uh, his co-workers, the uh, spirit of Christmas past and the spirit of Christmas yet to come. Wait, who uh, is he? Is he present or is he past? He, he's present. Oh, okay. Uh, past <laughs> is Sunita Mani, uh-huh. and uh, yet to come is voiced by Tracy Morgan. All right. So every year they pick one despicable person to show them their lives and, you know, teach them the meaning of Christmas and turn them into better human beings. And uh, they, they think they know who they're going to do the following year, but they happen to catch in action this guy named Clint Briggs, played by Ryan Reynolds. He's one of those like media manipulator types, and he is a complete scumbag. <laughs> and uh, the kind of guy who can manufacture scandals to get politicians or corporations out of, uh, out of trouble. Uh, we see him do... Arguably the most Christmassy number in this movie called We're Bringing Back Christmas, but yeah. it's this very cynical play to the Christmas Tree Growers Association <laughs> to start a culture war against people who have artificial trees. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is a full on musical, by the way, it is. like lots and lots and lots of songs by Pasek and Paul, which you might look at as a good thing or a bad thing. Mm-hmm. Um, Will Ferrell mm-hmm. sings, Ryan Reynolds sings, Octavia Spencer sings, they dance. There's a lot. Uh, the choreography is exceptional also, by the way. Anyway, so they pick Ryan Reynolds' character. They pick uh, Clint Briggs to be their perp for the following year. But this guy, slick and savvy as he is, manages to turn the tables and spends most of the evening getting uh, the spirit of Christmas present to look at his own life and his own choices and figure out why he doesn't want to move on with things. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it, it, this, this is a, a very big Christmas musical, and it's a lot. It is too much. (laughs) (laughs) It is over two hours long. When I opened up the file and I realized it was over two hours long, I'm like, ah, come on, really? (laughs) Um, But musicals are, they tend to be because that that, those, those numbers eat up time. You know, this one does not need to be and There are too many numbers. So um, I really appreciate that they're going for it. I really appreciate the chutzpah of it and the stepping out of their comfort zone. We complain about Ryan Reynolds doing the same thing over and over again. And while this character is in that vein, he's kind of smarmy and deadpan and, and cocky. The fact that he's like having to sing and dance and then do some more dramatic moments eventually, spoiler, um, I appreciate that. I appreciate the, the the daring of that. And, you know, he, and Will Ferrell is of course his adorable goofy self as as always. um, But he gets to do more as well. And I like the fact that Octavia Spencer gets to be a romantic lead. Like how often does that happen? That I can't even think ever. And she acquits herself the best of all the people who are not exactly musical theater veterans (laughs) here doing the singing and dancing. I thought she was the best in terms of just her expression her interpretation her vocal abilities yeah they, the they're all, all three of them are acting these songs more than they're singing them necessarily and that in that rex harrison sort of way but i mean yeah she's I think singing she yes okay <laughs> <laughs> i i am not a fan of Pasek and paul i have to say like i i did not care for the greatest showman um la la you know, land they, they did the lyrics, but not the music. Of right. La La Land. It was pointed out to me. Um, mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I'm a uh, dear Evan Hansen. You know, not they're yeah. not my faves. <laughs> and I think the, the numbers that work better for me here are the we're putting on a big musical number yeah, numbers and maybe less the, you know, one person in, in, you know, expressing their innermost feelings. Although the Octavia Spencer song is one of the best ones because Octavia Spencer is really selling it. Uh, Chloe Arnold is the choreographer uh-huh. here. And I think... She's the MVP of this movie. And in fact, if you're going to see this film and you can see it in a theater this week before it goes to Apple TV Plus, I would recommend doing that for the choreography because mm-hmm. I think it's really spectacular. And it's very different from scene to scene. You ha- you'll get like yeah. traditional tap. You'll get 
ice skating. There's a thing with flashlights that I think high school drama mm. productions are going to steal for decades to come because <laughs> it, for not much money, you get a lot of bang for your buck. It's all, you know, I think that that is a constantly sort of innovative and exciting thing. But I think that the director, uh, 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 Sean um, Anders, Sean Anders, thank you, who did the Daddy's Home movies, uh, kind of loses his grip on the material. And yeah. I think it's, there's just too much. Like one of my best, one of my favorite songs in the movie is is one that got cut and runs under the closing credits. Like there's just there's this surfeit of material that they don't know how to handle, and it just seems a little overblown by the end of it. The best song is the Good Afternoon song. That it's, was fun. It's, it's fine. It's mean. It's playful. It, it sounds has like the something... sweep of the musical that the rest of it needs to have. Well, the number is fun, and I think they're very much kind of aping the 1970s Scrooge in that in that number. And, and you, there, I think there are reference points to other Christmas yeah. Carol movies throughout this one. The song is fine. It it, it seemed like something Seth MacFarlane would write. <laughs> <laughs> no, I enjoyed that. I felt like that's what they executed that much more effectively than any of the big numbers and definitely but any all, of the smaller numbers. Well, it's also a, this is probably the only purely comedic number. That is true. Um, so. We got a bunch of little uh, pop culture references all throughout, which were kind of hit and miss. Kind of some cameos that are kind mm -hmm. of amusing, I suppose. I won't give them away here. Yeah, I mean, it just felt kind of oppressive and also at the same time kind of inept quite frequently. Like, I think you're right that he does not know how to direct a big musical like this. And, and the big numbers, as you say, the choreography is kind of great, but we can't always – see what everyone is doing all that well. Like, I'm not sure that he like lets that shine the way that it needs to as often as it should. I came away from this having enjoyed it, but I, it did feel like uh, it, it was like, you know, you have a really good dinner and then they bring out like three more plates and you're like, Oh my God. And one of those plates okay. is very dark. It goes to a really heavy, dark place that is jarring and feels really out of place with the lightness of the uh, rest of this film. But I think I think Ghost of Christmas Yet to Come always gets you to one of those places. Okay. So I, I, I think, I mean, look, it's they kill Tiny Tim. You know, Christy. <laughs> that, that, that's the part of the story where the dark shit happens. So I, I, that didn't take, it didn't it didn't take me out of it. <laughs> All right. So what is your number then? I, I like said seven and a half. Like it's, this is not necessarily like going to be a fave of mine, but I'll, I will dip into it every so often. I think at Christmas time, just because I think there is a lot here I like, but I like musicals and I like a Christmas carol. I'll never watch the movie again. I'm giving it a five. So okay. um, <laughs> we are very split on this. Let us know what you guys think. It's going to be on Apple TV plus next week. Soon. On the 18th. Yes.